Hey guys, this is John from US Dash Camera. Today I got a review on the Viafo A129 Duo. So, many of you have probably seen the Viafo A119, which has been one of the most popular budget cameras for the past few years. And you can see this one is a very similar design, but it does have this rear camera. So, full disclosure, Viafo did send this one out to me for review. Previously, I, I I think I got them from OCD Tronic, but uh, this time Viafo reached out to me. So, what's special about this one is it does have full HD Sony service front and rear, and this one does have Wi Fi with an app, unlike the A129. So, it's more than just the dual channel A119, it's quite a big leap. So, here you can see on the back dual channel, same for rear, Sony Starvis, 1.8 aperture, 7 element, glass lens, same for rear, 140 degree wide angle view, uh, viewing angle, which I think is a good compromise, uh, A119 had 170 or something in the original model, which is, I think, personally too high. The Wi-Fi is 2.4 gigahertz or f 5 gigahertz, GPS logger, just like the A119 where the camera mounts onto the GPS plate. We got a circular polarizing lens filter which will filter uh, reflections from your picture such, such as your dashboard. Of course we got the G sensor and motion detection, parking mode, uh, the quick release mount just like the A119, and a Bluetooth emergency remote. So Viafo was kind enough to send me both the new parking mode cable so you can see there's a black is ground and then we got the ACC and battery connection so I'll talk about this a little bit and they did also send me the Bluetooth remote control I didn't even know that this was an option so I thought that was pretty cool so let's open up and take a look at it so you open it up and Viafo is definitely one of the better Chinese companies when it comes to dash cameras. Now Anchor is Chinese also and I think their products in the past have looked nicer but I think Viafo has offered better dash cameras. So you can see it's very similar to the A119 same wedge shape design same style plate. Looks like it has a uh, better pins. The original A119 had to be updated because there are issues with those pins. And then you can see a menu button, record, a lock emergency button, mic, so you can mute the audio and I believe that's if you want to view your files. That's powered by mini USB. There's an audio video out and a rear camera cable which is looks like a proprietary USB it's not standard mini USB and came with the uh, CPL adapter already on here so we'll uh, show some comparisons of that so this is just a simple example your results may vary depending on the angle of your windshield uh, your dashboard and the time of day or how bright it is so as I put this on, you'll see that the reflection does reduce, and when I cut back to without it, it does appear more visible in the reflection. So that's the point of the CPL filter. But again, your results may vary based on your situation and lighting. Now while we're on the topic of showing footage, let's take a look at some driving footage. So I think this 1080p front and rear looks really excellent especially for a camera priced at $170 currently. I think a couple of years ago a dual channel camera wouldn't look this good and would be $300 to $400. Even the rear camera looks great. A few years ago cameras still had only 720p in the rear and were several hundred dollars. So these cameras both front and rear do have a pretty high bitrate of 16 megabits per second which is adequate enough for 1080p. So even the night footage with the Sony Starvis image sensors I think looks really great. Now 
there's going to be a little bit of degradation of course at night especially in certain really low light situations or especially if you're looking out the rear camera now I got my rear camera right on the back half window of my Prius but you can see here if there's any street lights or all at all or my brake lights even it lights up behind quite a bit so I'm happy with that so we got the manual we got a little pry tool this can uh, help pry trim off your car or can also help you get the cable up in your headboard got some adhesive cable clips these can be helpful for hiding wire we got the power cable like I said mini USB so it is a double port charger let's see it's got 5 volts 3.1 amps uh, so it should be able to fast do a little bit quicker charging maybe not fast charge like quick charge Qualcomm quick charge but shouldn't be t super slow charging your phone here's just a extra mini USB cable for data transfer they seem to always throw these in there's the camera here we got the rear mounting plate so as you can see it will mount like that I really like that some extra adhesives and the rear camera cable which I've got to say is pretty uh, large guessing the 90 degree one will go into the front yep so that way it'll go straight up and I'm a little disappointed at how thick this is like I'd say this is a standard cable thickness and you can see there it's quite noticeable now I forgot to show this side you can see there's a reset button there so you can use a pin to reset the camera and that's of course where the micro USB cable would go and I didn't forget to mention they also threw in this Viofo branded memory card so I'll be using this for testing so let's take a look at this little remote a little tiny user manual a little tiny uh, adhesive a battery and the button nothing else in there feels pretty solid let's see if uh, we open it up spinning it okay so it comes with the battery inside of it and comes with a spare I like that that's nice that they include a spare so here is the hardware kit that is required for the parking mode what's unique about this compared to many cheaper cameras is it does have three wires so you'll see this is a ground right here we got yellow the ACC wire so this is going to connect to uh, a fuse in your fuse box that's only on when your car is on a lot of cars this ACC fuse is listed in your manual so you're gonna wanna check your manual I'm not gonna go too in depth into installation because that can be a whole other video but check your manual make sure you know what you're plugging into because you don't want to plug into something like uh, your windshield wipers or any sort of safety device but typically there's an ACC fuse and in most cars that's off when the car is off now this one is the battery so this is going to connect to a fuse with uh, the power on even when your car is off so that's going to be important for the parking mode of this camera and typically a good uh, fuse to plug into is something like your uh, dome lights or whatever sometimes cars will have uh, a fuse just for interior lights so again just don't plug into something that's uh, safety device now it's recommended that you buy little add fuses these will connect to add fuses and then you'll take the existing fuse out and you can just put a 3 amp fuse 
onto the piggyback portion. So I'll show a picture of what that looks like. But like I said, I'm not going to go too in depth into it uh, on installation because it can add another five minutes to the video. But I will go into the parking mode of the A129. So there's going to be multiple options for the parking mode. I only have the three wire version to test, but there is also a two wire version. And from my understanding, it's similar, but it's based on the camera sensing you aren't moving anymore, where this one senses that your car was shut off and can immediately switch to parking mode. Now I'm not sure if all of these features are available for the two wire version, but I'm going to be talking about the three wire version since that's what I tested. So if you update to firmware 1.5, which is very important because when I received this camera several months ago it was not up to date on firmware. I did have to go to the Viaful website and get the new firmware. It adds three different parking modes. The parking mode I'm showing currently is motion detection. So when it switches to parking mode with motion detection, if it senses motion, it'll start recording from the front or rear camera. And there you can see that person, when we transitioned to that video, suddenly appeared. So this camera isn't as advanced as some of the more high-end Korean cameras. So I would not expect something like Blackview, Thinkware, or Blaxis level of parking mode. There's no buffered recording, so that means when it senses motion, it starts recording a second or two after. So it is pretty quick. As you can see, these people will pop up and they'll be on screen at the time. So this would be good enough to capture someone for example, cross this parking lot backing up into you because it'll start recording when it senses the driver getting into the car or the car backing up. For motion detection this is okay, but some of the more advanced cameras allow you to just use impact detection because then you don't have as many recordings. With buffered impact detection you would only record when your car is hit in parking mode, but it would save five to seconds prior to the impact so you actually capture the impact so again since this is just motion detection based it's not that big of a deal as it starts recording with in about a second or two now the second option we have is you can record constantly in parking mode in a time lapse function and you can choose the frame rate like two three five ten seconds i believe it goes as high as 15 frames per second the benefit of that is you're always recording but it takes up very little memory card space. But it can make finding important events harder. But with motion detection, you might get too much motion in high traffic areas where you're constantly recording high bit rate. And that's where the low bit rate function comes in. And that's the third parking mode option we have. So with the low bit rate parking mode, basically you're going to be using a quarter of the bit rate of the normal recording or the motion detection parking mode. So you're going to save a lot of memory card space. And the reason you'd want to do that is perhaps at work you work eight hours a day and you park in a very high traffic area. Well if you only have a 32 gigabyte memory card you very well likely will just erase over everything even from your morning in those eight hours that motion detection can fill up your memory card really quickly or completely in one day if you don't have a big enough memory card. Now, they suggest a 128 gigabyte card is the limit, but I've heard people have been able to use 256 megabyte memory cards. But either way, for people that don't want to use time lapse, but also don't want to constantly fill up their memory card, the low bitrate option here is for those people. Now the video quality is noticeably not as good but if a car backs up into you the video is still good enough to see license plates. But the issue with this though is it is always recording so if you don't park in a very high traffic area you might be better off with the motion detection. You're, you're really gonna have to weigh out your options. Now 
As much as I like that Viafo has offered these new parking mode functions, it's still more limited than I would like. One feature I would really like is a timer function, so if I could have the ability to turn the camera off after 12 hours of parking mode, or even 6 hours, or 24 or 48 hours, I would really appreciate that because I don't drive very often, or very much a week except on weekends. My commute is very short, and my car battery would just constantly get drained every single day. And that's not very good, especially in the winter. Now a lot of the more advanced cameras like Blackview and Thinkware do have timer functions built in or through their hardware and kits. So I would like to see that in future Viafo products if they want to improve their parking mode. And another issue is the fact that if you really care about parking mode, which I personally do, is you can get the Blackview DR590 camera. It doesn't have Wi-Fi, but it does have the great Blackview parking mode for about $200 starting. So it's not a whole lot more. Now the video quality might not be as good, I'll, I'll admit that, but if you really care about parking mode, then the video quality doesn't need to be that great anyways just to uh, record a slow moving car backing into you. Now the biggest complaint I will give about the parking mode feature is with a three wire cable. It uses a 90 degree cable and it has to be plugged into the main camera. It cannot be connected to the GPS mounting plate. And that means it interferes slightly with the rear camera cable. It'll plug in but you do have to really wedge the uh, one of the wires off to the side to get them to both fit because they're both 90 degree angle cables. Now as highly critical as I sound right now, I still do really love this camera. It's still under $200 and has excellent front and rear 1080p night and day. And you know there's some cheaper options out there like the Aki DR02, but based on the features this camera has, now I'm not going to get into the Wi-Fi or the menus because I, us I usually do, but I want to keep my videos shorter. Um, it, it's got a lot of features, but most cameras under $200 don't have the advanced parking mode, so I can't really expect that. So what this camera is good for is if you're just looking for a front and rear camera that's mostly good for recording while you're driving. Great 1080p front and rear, but also you get a little bonus features with the Wi-Fi app, which lets you change the settings or download files to your phone wirelessly. It's not that advanced. It doesn't have a lot of the social media features like some companies like DDPi or Blackview has, but it's functional and it works. I've tested it and it worked for me just fine. And of course, the parking mode, it's nice that it's there. Viafo is improving. I feel like they're improving year by year. So I put this camera on my top 10 cameras of holidays 2018 or New Year's 2019, whatever you want to call it. And I guess the reason is if you can spend between 150 to 200 but maybe not more than 200 then this is the option for you. The DR02 from Aki is less than $150 but it's not as good. It doesn't have Wi-Fi. It doesn't have as good a video quality. This is the camera if you're looking for a dual channel camera between 150 to 200 dollars if that's your budget. I really like it and uh, it's overall a great camera even though you know I do have some of the criticisms but that's just me comparing it to what else is on the market and of course some of the cameras I'm comparing it to are more expensive so you have to consider that but again overall that's my review I hope you guys enjoyed this video I mentioned in a title card that th this camera I am going to be giving away so check down in the description on how to win that it just involves uh, commenting on another video subscribing yada yada it was announced in my previous video so check that down in the description of course also if you're interested in purchasing this you can 
purchase it from affiliate links down below and I have coupon codes for black box my car who does sell viable products so check below again down in the description I would appreciate it if you can help support my channel and as usual drive safe thanks for watching and I will see you next time